Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome in to another episode of the Triple Play Fantasy Baseball Show. Proud member of Underdog and the Underdog Fantasy family. And if you head over at Underdog right now and use promo code TRIPLE, you'll get a deposit match up to $100. So whatever you put down up to $100, they will double your first deposit. Again, it's only your first deposit. So if you have an Underdog account you've already been using, you will not be eligible. But if you have never done Underdog, use code TRIPLE. We'll get you some money. We are back with you guys for week two of the Triple Play Fantasy Baseball podcast of the 2024 season and week four overall for fantasy baseball. Uh, we're in the thick of things, basically, what, are three weeks into the season or so? So kind of getting a sense of maybe there's some breakouts coming along here, guys with some redemption. Obviously, we talked last week about the insane amount of pitcher injuries that have only continued to be added on since our last show. Art, how are your fantasy teams doing? Have they withstood this crazy wave of injuries? Most of my teams, I've been fairly fortunate with with my injuries. I do have uh, um, uh, an NFBC 50 team, which is a 12 team draft and hold, where my pitching staff is is really hurt by injuries. But thank thankfully, with a 12 team draft and hold, you have a pretty deep pitching staff on that team, anyways. So that that. Luckily, I've been able to back that up. Still not doing very well in pitching. I have some pitching staffs where I have like 22 overall Roto points right now in all uh, five categories, and I'm just like, just just like crossing fingers for better results. Today's Luis Castillo good game like could not have come at a better time for a lot of my teams. You know, he was in that same tier with Gosman, him. You know, those two. Uh, kind of that that second tier ace guy that Zach you waited. Wheeler. Who Zach Wheeler? Zach like Wheeler. Th- those guys that you waited on uh, in the initial Strider Burns and obviously uh, Cole before all the injuries mm-hmm. happened with him. They, you were trusting on as your ace, and had, he had not performed until this start. Uh, so very nice to see that from him. I know that there was a you wanted to kind of look into his numbers because again it's his first good start and. I think fantasy owners, I know I'd gotten a lot of questions about, is it time to to try to trade him, worry about him, what's going on with him? Obviously, you should not be doing that. What is it, less than a month in the season? Yeah. And if there's a player that turns it around more than anybody, it's Luis Castillo. If you guys remember a couple of years ago when he had like a six ERA and it was through, or it was something ridiculous through like the first month or two of the season. And then he ended up finishing as one of the best pitchers in baseball when he was with the Reds. He doesn't like cold weather. I think like yeah. he doesn't like pitching in the early season. He's never good to start the season. Uh, he, besides he, last year. Besides last year, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. That was the one exception. But I think he's going to right the ship. He's still, uh, his, his, he still was pitching pretty well. His K-minus walk rate was about the same as it had been last year. Um, came out, silenced a pretty good Cubs lineup today for most of uh, – for six innings, he had a couple of unearned runs, but looked pretty good. So that, you know, it's good, good, good news for Luis Castillo owners. Yeah. Doc, the Orioles in your neck of the woods, uh, Colton Cowser's had a quite a week. Jackson holiday was called up and the excitement around the Orioles has never been higher right now. You know, it's funny. We use that in my, uh, tactics at work, you know, when we're promoting O stuff, that excitement has never been higher. And you look at all the talent they have in the major leagues, and then you think about the minor leagues where they have Heston Kierstad, where they have Kobe Mayo. And uh, I, I've never seen a team that has had this much good young hitting in recent memory. Just this last week, Colton Kowser, uh, he has, oh my gosh, uh, he has 12 RBIs this past week. He has four home runs. And over the course of that time, he also has 10 hits. Uh, he's average throwing the baseball. He had another home run today. Uh, he looks like to me the earliest, the early, obviously, hitter out of the year based on the fact that he's giving you two steals. He has four home runs. Uh, he's hitting in one of the best lineups in baseball. Uh, we're talking about Garrett Crochet, who I'm sure we'll talk more about again later. And he might be the pitching pick of the year. Cows are the hitting pick up of the year. Is that fair to say? In the early going? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like he's putting up the numbers that people thought Jackson Holiday would put up. Well, I mean, Jackson Holiday, 
Actually got his first major league hit today. One for four with a run. Um, yeah, guess how much that ticket stub went for. <laughs> oh God, who knows? We were 80 there bucks. Week. 80 bucks? 80 bucks for his first hit, 150 for his debut ticket. Did you manage to get either of those, Doc? No. So we were counting you on, Doc, to get us a couple copies of those, but I guess not. Um, I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts, kind of looking at some of the most added players over this past week as kind of getting into our first segment. Just looking at most added, should we buy in to what we're seeing in these most added, or are you kind of just riding the wave expecting it to crash? Uh, first one to kick things off, Tyler O'Neill, who actually I believe at this point is still tied for Major League Baseball lead in home runs with six. He's got six homers, only seven RBIs hitting just under 300 uh, for the Boston Red Sox. But the interesting thing is his walk rate is is looking great this year. He's not striking out nearly what he has in the past. Is Tyler O'Neill obviously he's a must-add, but is this somebody you should try to sell high on, or should you really just try to lock him in, thinking this is what he can give you the rest of the season here? I, I don't want to sell high on Tyler O'Neill. I think Tyler O'Neill is a, you know, a, a, a potentially, you know, top three, four round talent, top three, four round producer in fantasy um, who, who falls on injuries. And, and there's, you know, if, if all you're hoping is that he stays healthy for the whole season and uh, that's what you're hoping for, it's not a question of skills. And, and personally, I don't question Tyler O'Neill's skills. I've touted Tyler O'Neill on this show before in past years. I've learned to temper that a little bit because he does always get injured, but, when he plays, generally, he's pretty good. We saw in a full season he had 34 home runs and 15 stolen bases just uh, two or three seasons ago. And the power is real. The speed is real. I think this year I'd hold on to him, hoping he can strike luck for the whole season. If he stays healthy, it's going to be a huge, huge bonus from where you took him. He's not far from being a top 100 pick. Actually, just also hit another home run today. Um, I think we've all seen the potential when he stays healthy. But the fact that the big change being just the cut in strikeouts and walking more, uh, that that's a huge change. He's in a, he's in a better ballpark, too. Mm -hmm. um, so Tyler O'Neill, definitely, we're buying it right now, unless we see something different. Um, what about Ryan McMahon? We talked about the O's guys, so those are must-ads. And again, in a great line. But Ryan McMahon, four for six on April 12th with two runs and two RBIs, 0 for 6 the next two days. To me, on the season, you look at his numbers, 393 batting average, two homers, 11 RBIs look great. But I feel like when you look at his box score, a lot of his production has come in, in like individual games. Like It's not like a cumulative, uh, he's been doing good for a 10-game stretch. It's He pretty much goes like 1 for 6, 1 for 10, then has like a three-hit game with like a homer and four RBIs then gets like one hit three straight games and then has four hits. It, it seems like it's been coming just kind of in those one game, huge production. And then kind of eh, granted he gets, does play in Colorado and he's multi-position eligible uh, on a couple sites. Is Ryan McMahon, somebody that you would be looking to move from? Well, we had talked about before the season that he's somebody you stream at home when facing lefties. And you look at the home road splits, batting average is pretty much the same, 391, 394, which is both great. But he has two homers and seven RBIs in six home games and zero homers, four RBIs in nine road games. Once again, I think that's the core's effect. I think the batting average will, inev will inevitably go down. And some of the counting stats have resulted because he is, hitting, he is hitting such a, a high batting average. So, um, I mean, I, I'd say he's more of a sell high than anybody else right now. I, I mean, I think he's going to have come out at the end of the season. I think we know what we're going to get at the end of the season. You know, he's going to have hot stretches. It's a good time to sell on him if you think he can sweeten a deal a little bit more because I think at the end of the season he's going to hit 250 with 20 home runs and 140 perhaps, 130 to 140 runs plus RBIs and a couple like six or seven stolen bases. That's what he does every year. He's really consistent. It's valuable. If you can keep him, like I, like Doc said, just just pitch him against, hit him against righties at home. If you can possibly do that, he's going to give you really good statistics for when he's in there. Currently, fifty five point seven percent owned over on ESPN. He is the number one ranked third baseman over there. He's second and third base eligible if you play there. 
Um, let's go to the ne- oh, another hitter on this list, MJ Melendez, who I know. Um, uh, my goodness, I had just had his name at the top of my head. Uh, Rob um, Silver. It was one of his three most drafted players, I believe. I remember him posting that right after the uh, the games began a few weeks ago. And if you remember, MJ Melendez led all minor leaguers in home runs before he was called up last year and didn't really look the part in his first full season. Obviously, he was catcher and outfield eligible last year, which helped. But the numbers never fully got to what we expected from him in his first big league season. Looked very different so far this year. He's hitting just under 300 with three homers and eight RBIs, even giving you a stolen base. Again, he's not catcher eligible anymore, but the one of the best offenses in baseball, surprisingly, has been the Kansas City Royals, and MJ Melendez has been a big part of that. Uh, I love MJ Melendez this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad I have him on two teams, and he seems like he's kind of starting to figure it out at the big league level. Uh, if someone else has MJ Melendez in your league, are you trying to acquire him? I, I am. I think he got robbed last season. Like he had a lot of barrels that just ended up sh- warning track shots and he was hurt by playing in Kauffman stadium. And I, you know, I knew that about it. I, I liked MJ Melendez last season because he was a league average hitter learning catcher and outfield when he was a rookie, you know, he was a 100 WRC plus as a rookie catching and learning outfield playing full-time outfield for the first time last season. I, you know, I, I believed in him and I didn't get as much of him as I wanted. I thought this was going to happen. MJ Melendez was a great hitter in, in, in the minors and uh, he's just showing it now. Um, I think, I think he's going to have a really so- strong season. What was interesting before you go doc, what was interesting about MJ Melendez was he's a righty. He actually hit righties at a pretty average clip. You th- you think he would hit lefties better than he did. Cause usually when you're a hitter and you Ooh, face the right. opposite handedness, you're, you're- you're going into my uh, into my argument, David. Oh, go ahead then, Doc. I, I kind of put it on a tee for you, so go ahead. Exactly. Well, I, I will preface and say that I would trade for him in a points league, not as much a roto, because he's not going to give you much stolen base upside. And now that he's not catcher eligible, he's hitting 222 against lefties this year and 314 against righties. That's a that's a little bit of once again a sell high to me. Uh, but you don't think that. You don't think the fact that he's a righty and he should hit lefties better that it means means that he could potentially even get better? I'm looking at 235 batting average last year, right. 217 the year before, and he's hitting 295 this year. I mean, if we said it was 270, wouldn't you say that's an improvement from last year? He hits yeah, but- he hits lefty. He he throws righty, but he hits lefty. That's what it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but then like- so what did Eric? So then you have it up in front of you, Eric. His splits. What did he hit? What did he hit against lefties last year? So last year he hit against lefties. Sorry, I'm pulling this up right now. Because then, if if I remember against correctly, lefties last year, he hit 222, and against righties, he hit 239. So that's what it was. So he was struggling against righties, and this year he's corrected that. Yeah, but he hit 222 against lefties this year and last year. I mean, do you see him? maintaining a 314 batting average against righties i mean maybe that goes down a little bit but also i i remember correctly he had a bad babip uh which is also what what brought down his batting average so maybe he's a little overperforming this year but he's got three home runs early on so he had this a 311 is 311 babip last year that's not awful no i'm saying that in in a way that like that it, it, he with a 311 babip last year that he could get even better what's his babip this year 333 See, there you go. See, like it's better if it goes, it could, it's going to go down most likely. But at the end of the day, if, if you told me MJ Melendez is a 270, 260 to 270 hitter with 25 home runs, which is basically yeah. right now what he's looking like he's on pace to do, uh, he's a value where you got him. And once again, I, I think a little bit of a sell. I mean, I think there is good value there. I mean, he had 16 last year in 148 games, but. I, I think he's a points league guy. I, I'm not as confident in Roto. Uh, but but I will say, I mean, the Royals offense looking better as a whole definitely helps. Yeah. He had 42 barrels and only 16 of them became home runs last year. I think I think he's a 20 home run bat. Uh, and outfield, you need like you need guys with with that kind of uh, with that kind of power and who have the the chance to have a pretty decent batting average. Let's slide over to some pitching 
ads and the number one ad Cody Bradford, who to be honest, it looked amazing. And then he just got put on the IL to, um, today with lower back soreness. So backs are, are very tricky because it's not an elbow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the bright side, back is not great either. Um, obviously there's no word on if it's going to be like the minimal stay. I think it's going to be kind of waiting and see, but he's given up a combined three earned runs so far on the season with a perfect three and zero record, a one forty ERA and 17 strikeouts in just over 18 innings. So uh, he's looked really good this year. The, the problem is that, again, the aisle stint starts complicating things. And to me, I was actually having this conversation with Doc earlier today. I said, I have to decide if I'm going to drop Paul Seawald or I'm going to drop Cody Bradford because I have Royce Lewis and I have Justin Steele as my other two aisle spots. So I only can keep one of them. And I said, it should you would think it would be easy. I'm just going to drop Cody Bradford. He was a streamer pickup, but it's not so easy anymore right now. He's looked really good. And it's one of those things. Like if you drop him, it could be on the minimal, the minimal, you know, maybe he misses two starts and then he's back. Um, my question to you guys is Cody Bradford for real. Granted, he just did play the Oakland A's. So obviously that start, maybe you could take with a grain of salt, but he did before that go seven and two thirds innings of Warner and run against the Houston Astros. It, should we be buying into Cody Bradford? I thought he looked good. He he pitched uh, five innings, struck out six against the Cubs. Uh, his first start of the season, then came out against the Astros, gave up one earned run in seven and two thirds. A's just did it again, you know, and so he's done eleven uh, so far, t t eighteen strikeouts. Uh, 17 strikeouts in in 19 innings that's pretty yeah. good strikeout okay you know almost a strikeout per inning and uh pitching with a good team i think the team context was really my favorite part of him like he he was going out for a win he is going out trying to get a win almost every time he has two walks in 19 innings this year that's yeah really impressive great to me. yeah I, I think he's looked impressive i think you can't drop him right now even with him hurt if you have an aisle spot, you got to use it on him um, just for the what if factor. Granted, I think you don't have an IL spot, that. you should trade him. I mean, I actually tried to do that in our league, our home league. Uh, I offered him in a trade um, just to wow, see. But David, I mean, David, David offered a trade that never happens. Yes, I do. It's not true. Um, I mean, just looking at his numbers across the board, there is some room for regression. A 13.9% swinging strike rate. Obviously, that is better than average, not elite. Yep. The CSW of 31%, again, better than average, not elite. Uh, fly ball uh, mile per hour of, or I'm sorry, fastball mile per hour. Guess how, guess how much his fastball, or like what his fastball is roughly averaging right now? Nine, 91. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, 90, it's like 90 miles an hour. Uh, yeah. I don't think I don't see that holding up all season. If you look into his expected numbers, though, it throws a wrench into things. His expected ERA is 172. He's got a FIP of 247. His expected FIP is 401. Um, I just see a bunch of average things across the board, and then I see some things like, again, like you see a 176 BABIP. We know that's going to get better. 13.9% uh, swinging strike rate, again, above average. He's a hard player to figure out because he's not this good, but if he ends up finishing the year with like a, a low three ZRA and, and wins you – 10 to 12 games that's a valuable piece in fantasy i think it's even more valuable with all the pitching injuries yeah but i mean with the lower back injury with the, with them getting lorenzen back uh i mean it, it really throws a wrench in because he looked like he was going to stay on and they might put heaney in the bullpen now his rotation spot might be in jeopardy when he comes back he might be a bullpen guy i i I, I'm not sure if I'd be holding on to him for the for a 15 day IL right now, um, just because you know, especially in like a highly competitive league, you don't really have the the spots unless you have like an IL like with. And most people would be comparing like you are. Do I keep him or do I keep uh, you know Josh Young or Eduardo Rodriguez or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a tough decision to make. It's so early on, and it's like you were waiting for maybe him have a blow up start, like kind of like Sean Manaya, who had looked good his first two starts and then had a blow up start his next one. 
Uh, but I did watch his second start, Sean Manias, and he was lucky to finish with what he did because he loaded the bases a couple times. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of like you have now you can't necessarily like feel comfortable dropping him. So you have to you're in a tough spot. Um, another player that is interesting that we didn't dive into a ton last week that interested to hear your guys' thoughts on our Ronel Blanco, who for the Houston Astros, everybody knew he threw the no hitter, goes out his next start, goes six innings of one hit baseball didn't give up a hit i believe until the fifth inning of that start then he goes out against texas again and gives up two earned runs in six innings with five strikeouts so he faces one of the best offenses in baseball two times in a row gives up a combined two earned runs in 12 innings you add on the fact that the astros rotation is dreadful hunter brown is the bust of the year and people that have hunter brown on your fantasy team r.i.p especially if you're anything where you're counting your uh in categories leagues because god lee he blew that up. He almost cost me my weekly matchup in our home league. Um, you have Justin Verlander coming back. You have Urquidy on the IL. You have Lance McCullers on the IL. You have Framber Valdez now on the IL. So to me, he looks like one of JP the most sure things in the rotation. Huh? I said JP France doesn't look good. JP France? Like, he, he has wiggle room, even if he doesn't perform how he's doing. I don't think he's on too many waiver wires. I, I can tell you on ESPN, he's almost 80% owned and ESPN and Yahoo are usually like the sites where the ownership's the lowest. So like he's probably not available, but then it brings us to the question of if you have him on your team, are you selling high? If someone has him, are you trying to acquire him? What are your guys thoughts on Ronel Blanco? I would keep him. I mean, you, we've talked about the pitching rotation being decimated, but that's still a really good offense. And their their record is mostly because of their pitching, not their hitting. I mean, last year between AAA and the majors, he threw 125 innings. So, you know, I don't worry about necessarily there being a limit. Like maybe he's not a 170, 180 guy. Maybe he goes 140, 150 max. But even the expected stats, a 131 expected ERA. He hasn't given up a home run this year. I'm not even putting too much weight into his last start because facing the Rangers for a second time, uh, I think is really impressive to only hold them to the three runs and all that two. damage was in the, or two runs. And both of those were in the first inning. Yeah. He looks really good. And he has the rotation security. Um, I mean, but like his K he, he only strikes out like 21%. Yeah. He, like doc said, he hasn't given up a home run yet. Um, I, I, I could see there, you know, when, when it starts to heat up, maybe, maybe he'll be good. Then it starts to heat up. He starts giving up home runs. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not a believer yet. He's a fly extreme fly ball pressure. So that obviously in the summer when it's warmer air, that's going to only hurt him. Are we all in the same train that if you can trade him high right now, you do that. I think so. If you, yeah. if you need pitching, I would keep him though. Yeah, I, I, would, I would even if I need pitching, I would shop around to see what I would could get for him. Um, would you guys I mean, rather have Ronel Blanco or would you rather have Tanner Houck? Blanco. Uh yeah, Blanco. Wait, I think I'd rather I think I'd rather have Houck. Would you rather have Ronel Blanco or Marcus Stroman? Rather have who? Marcus Stroman or Ronel Blanco. <laughs> uh I think I know what I'm getting with Marcus Stroman. I think there's a huge regression coming from Ronel Blanco. I think I would take Stroman. I, I, I like Blanco. I just don't think he's going to be – I think he's going to yeah. be somebody by the end of the year is going to be featured in streamer articles because he's not going to be someone you consistently can trust week to week. Right. Either he's going to go through a period of, of downtime because he's never worked this many innings or their motion yeah. to the bull, bullpen or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think everybody kind of has their expectations tampered with uh, Ronel Blanco. I do want to hear your guys' thoughts going through some more top ads. We did talk about Tanner Houck, who did have, a, have his first bad outing against the Angels. 12 hits, four earned runs, only two strikeouts, and five and two-thirds innings. I am a big believer in what the Boston Red Sox rotation is doing this year and as a whole. And I think Houck has the highest upside of that group. Are you guys after that start trying to acquire Tanner Houck? 
not any more than I was before. You know, we had talked about last week how all the pitchers besides Bayo were doing really well. And even, I mean, Bayo wasn't doing awful, but they had played the Oakland Athletics and the Los Angeles Angels. Then they got swept by the Orioles. And then Tanner Howe gave up 12 hits and four earned against the Angels again. I think the Red Sox are overachieving this year. I'm not saying I wouldn't try it and acquire Hauk, but uh, I think the two games that he had at the beginning of the season are the best that you're getting, and he still went six innings in both of them. I don't think he's going to be a workhorse that is going to go seven-plus consistently. Yeah. I think right now Tanner Hauk is my best try to buy low and acquire after this start. I think the strikeout stuff I think is real. I think I know they, I think they were messing with the vertical approach for these Red Sox pitchers. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he's, again, the highest upside pick. I know Cutter Crawford's a popular one. Garrett Whitlock's kind of been lucky. So Garrett Whitlock is kind of, I think, kind of a little bit of a, a false sense there from what he's done. Um, so I, I think, again, if you can get him off a bad start, um, I think that, that'd be a good move to make here. Um, what do you guys think about Spencer Turnbull, who... Just gave up three earned runs in four innings against the Pittsburgh Pirates, but before that had pitched 11 innings of shutout baseball with 13 strikeouts. Uh, I do know he's incorporated the sweeper this year, and he's using it more than any other pitch he has before. Um, so he's, it's like a new Spencer Turnbull out there. Is it this new Spencer Turnbull, a guy that's 1-0 and with a 180 RA, is this a, a new and improved Turnbull, or is, do you expect by the end of the year he's back to what he's always been? Uh, well, I want him to be healthy for the whole year. Um, I'd like to see that. I think we've had a few starts and stops for him the last few seasons. Uh, it always looked like he was about to be, you know, ready to be a, a full-time pitcher, but he hasn't put together a full season, you know, in a long time. And, you know, he looked like a pretty good uh, serviceable starter back in the day with Detroit. He doesn't have like overwhelming stuff. He's got, you know, his fastball is at you know, 92. Uh, he, you know, he's, 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 he's going to try and win with location and he's not going to strike out a whole bunch of people. I think the fact that he's on Philly makes him rosterable as like a team streamer, but you know, I, I don't, I don't envision him being someone I would chase after too, too heavily. He had 31 innings pitched last year, missed all of 2022, 50 innings in 2021, 56.2 in the 2020 COVID season, and then 148 the year before. Right now, his K percentage, 26.2 is the highest of his career. I see serious regression, or I see him not being able to stay healthy for the entire season. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about this being the year of pitcher injuries, but also it seems like to be the year of relievers turned starters. We saw AJ Puck has done it. We see uh, Jordan Hicks. Well, he was going to be who I was going to get to next. I was going to try to lead up with one other guy. Uh, who was somebody else that was early? Uh, Garrett Crochet. And now we're, you know, again, Jordan Hicks. It's another one of those guys. And I think if you had told me Ronaldo who Lopez, your, who is on your do not draft list? I think Byron Buxton. Well, obviously, but I think Jordan Hicks would have been on that list for me if you'd brought him up and asked me because you had a guy that was wild as a closer, always injured. Always injured, yep. And then you have a guy that's expected to throw more innings as a starter and also expect him to be able to keep his control for a longer period of time. I didn't think it would mix, but he goes out there and he's already gone uh, to 18 innings of two earned run baseball. Uh, with a one ERA. Now, granted, 18 innings, 13 strikeouts. The strikeouts have not been there. But if you take away just the lack of strikeouts, he only has three walks over 18 innings. It's absolutely bonkers. Um, He looks good. He looks really good for the Giants right now. Uh, I think it's one of those things I'm probably not trying to trade for him. If I have him, I'm probably shopping him around. And if no one's biting, I'll just enjoy it until it starts falling apart. Do you guys feel differently about Jordan Hicks? I didn't have any shares of Jordan Hicks, but you know, it's the same thing. Like I, I'm not going to try and buy high now. Yeah. I think you have, you know, FOMO that you don't have him, but I wouldn't be willing to give up a lot for him. Yeah. I, I definitely was in the same boat as you. He was going late. He was easy to get. He was available. I just did not think that he was going to be a, the type of pitcher that was going to hold up for a whole season. 
still not sure, but I, you know, the San Francisco seems to know how to use their pitchers pretty well. And maybe I should have put a little bit more trust in the organization that they might have something for them. As your, uh, as your brother comments, Joe, he said that, uh, he's always had an electric arm and pitchers all of a sudden can click. Um, that seems to have happened with him and it's happening with Garrett crochet, who I know we brought up last week, but I'm interested to hear your guys thoughts after his first bad outing gives up five earned runs in under five innings does get 10 strikeouts against the, the Cincinnati Reds. I don't care that he gave up five earned runs against the Reds. I look at the 10 strikeouts and if you also watch the game or you went to Twitter to look at thoughts about the game, apparently there was an inning that the ump, cheated him of a third strike and he ended up giving two earned runs after that. If I'm someone that is in a league with someone that has Tanner Houck and you can trade, I'm taking that bad start and I'm seeing whatever I can do to get him on my team. Cause I think the, as long as Garrett crochet holds up and, and obviously his innings are going to be capped uh, as he's going to be for a, the worst team, one of the worst teams in baseball. And you would expect he gets shut down with the lack of innings he's had over the last couple of years. But I think he is the most legit pitcher breakout this year. And I think as long as he's healthy, he's going to continue to give you a ton, a ton of K's. And for the most part, give you a very respectable ERA. What do you guys think? I think yeah, that it was that go ahead, Art. No, I, I want to make a further. You, you go first. I, I want to, I want to back up a point. Uh, I, I watched the game yesterday. It was really one inning that plagued him. And then the rest of the, the reds hit nine batters in the inning. And then the rest of the, the game, he was dominant. And then when he was at 92 pitches, he got pulled. And you could see that he didn't want to come out of the game. So, you know, you look at the 10 strikeouts. And, and what was really impressive to me, I watched some of the at-bats. Like to Heimer Candelario, he was down 3-0 at a certain point. And then to go and throw three straight strikes, um, you know, rather than just insisting on walking a batter, I really love how he came back from there. And he set his pitches up very well. So I, I like Crochet as a sleeper this year. It's unfortunate that he won't get a lot of wins, but uh, he looks great on the mound. He so, really does. So like, little tangent, if he goes only like 100 innings, 110 innings this year, but he's not injured and they shut him down, and he's like a 3-5, 3-6 ERA with a really good whip and good strikeouts, where does he go next year? I think do the White Sox do it. anything on offense? I think where Cole Reagans went this year, I think I, like in the fourth, fifth round. Yeah. I think that so we, we can predict the White Sox are going to stink again next year. So I think that's, I mean, no offense to White Sox fans anywhere, but uh, there, there are a few years away. I mean, so. the nobody thought the Royals would contend this year and Cole Reagans was still a fourth or fifth round pick. It's a good point. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Especially if he's like no injury, just shut down. His performance is good. Yeah. He'll go up high. Yeah, I would be surprised, again, assuming that he keeps up this and just gets shut down for innings um, and no injury. Yeah, he'll definitely – I can't see him making out of the top 60 with uh, the upside he had. Remember, he was being compared to Chris Sale when he first brought to the team, like a righty yeah. Chris Sale. So, yeah. or I'm sorry, a lefty or whatever is the, the opposite hand. They're both lefties. I you know, the, the, the Chris Sale reincarnation. I, I, I want to ask this because I've just done some research and we're about two weeks into the season, right? So relatively large sample size. And I've noticed some players that have goose eggs or very little amount in one category. Alex Bregman has zero home runs. Jose Altuve has zero stolen bases. Ronald Acuna has zero home runs. How many Ian stolen Happ bases does he have? He has seven. What was I know? Uh, the people bet on his stolen bases. Yes, we're sweating bullets right now. <laughs> Ian Happ has zero home runs and zero steals. Francisco Lindor, one home run, zero stolen bases. What are your thoughts on some of those? Buying Lindor. Uh, I mean, Acuna, I'm not worried about Acuna. I don't think anybody is really, right? Um, give me some of the other names you said again. Uh, Alex Bregman has zero home runs. I mean, he was never a power hitter. I think he'll still finish the year with 20-ish. Ian Happ has zero home runs and zero stolen bases. You should ask the Cubs fan about that one because I'm interested to hear his thoughts about that. But he's been leading off. They've been batting him lead off a lot this season. I think he's done a good job. He's been one of our hottest hitters. But, yeah, we need, it'll be nice to see some power from him. And he's hitting nice. 259. 
Well, he's hitting 259. I thought, well, I know he had started off the season pretty strong. See, he's hitting 130 over his last Joe, seven games. Joe says he's made games. it on base every game so far. Yeah, he's been leading off for them, I think, pretty much every game. Do you feel then, like he's been a better real-life player than fantasy player? Is that fair to say? I think he's a very good real-life baseball player. Yeah. 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 Um, Would you... And then not the. Not that you're worried about Jose Altuve, but he has five home runs and zero stolen bases, and you likely took him for somewhat of a source of speed. Like that, yeah. that's something where I'm getting hurt in TGFBI because I took him as an earlier pick, thinking that I would get you know 15, 20 bags out of him. And obviously, the batting average is great; he's hitting over 370. But uh, he, he's kind of hurting me in that category where I drafted him to excel in. I want to go back to Hap for a second, Art. If you're in a league where you have Ian Happ and he's your fifth outfielder and mm. you, and you're basically the most, the let's say your four outfielders ahead of him. You can't, you're not going to drop. Would, if Colton Kowser was on your waiver wire, would you drop Hat for Kowser? I try not to. I, I, that would be, that would be hard if that was my work, my easiest drop. Like I try to fit Kowser in at a util. If I couldn't, Half for Kowser, golly. It's a tough one. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'd, I'd probably still keep half. I probably keep half. Okay, so you rather? I think I would rather take Kowser. Um, but that's because I, I think there's. I, I would go for the upside. I think at the end of the year, Hap's going to give you what he's going to give you. Yeah, but Kowser potentially has another gear in him. So, but I think it's that's kind of the range to expect right now. It's a tough question. Yeah. Yeah. Um Eric, Eric, as far as Altuve goes, like if I remember correctly, he also didn't steal in the beginning of last year. And it was over a stretch once we got closer to the middle of the season that he started stealing more bases. If you can kill some airtime for a second, I can give you the exact stolen base breakdown by month for him. Yeah, for the most yeah. part, for the most part, I think, you know, I, I don't love – Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback of the Packers, and then one year they were like 0 and 2, and he just said R E L A X. I think for the most part with these guys, it's R E L A X. Bregman's home runs, it, it I, I, I think he's going to be. You, you should not have thought he might get 30. I guess is what I'll say about Bregman's home runs. I think yeah, 20 home runs. He might he might dip down from last season. I think he had like twenty three or twenty four last season. Um, I, I I don't really believe in the power uh, anymore. I just think it's interesting when we get to this point in the season. Like Air, I, I had a list of players that hadn't hit their first home run. Like Arenado just hit his first yeah. last game or, or on Saturday's game. Vinny Pasquantino didn't hit a home run until uh, earlier in the week. Obviously, coming back from a shoulder injury himself. So I don't think Spencer Torkelson has a home run yet. So, you know, these are, yeah, Spencer Torkelson, zero home runs. To me, yeah. that's just, it, it's interesting when I see a zero in a certain category for a player that I thought would at least give you something at this point. Okay, so Doc, last year, Jose Altuve, he had zero stolen bases in May. He had five in June, two in July, six in August. Okay. So safe to say maybe that it's even though he has only one, he didn't get his first stolen. Uh, granted, he missed the you know part of April on the beginning of May because of his injury last year, but he still had 40 at uh, 40 plate appearances in May and didn't have a steal. And then it wasn't until June where he started to get. So I, I think it's fair to say he could potentially start stealing more bases mm -hmm. as we get closer later on in the season. Um. But yeah, no, I, I think it's it's interesting when you do see it, and people are panicking about Vinny Pasquantino, and then he's now those last few days he's been heating up, and I mean you weren't paying a, a top, uh, you know, he wasn't even a top ten ranked first baseman, Vinny Pasquantino, if I remember correctly. So it's like, yeah. you know, you're you're not like sitting here like a Pete Alonso type of ADP where you're like his first home run, you got him at a pretty big discount, and there's still a lot of time for him to figure it out after he missed most of last season, so. Again, maybe another buy low opportunity for Vinny Pasquantino. Oh, that window passed. Well, 
Yeah, probably. Um, there are, Angelo in the chat says Bregman's riding his bench for now. If Bregman's riding your bench, you must have a stacked ass team because yeah. I can't. I can bench Bregman. Well, yeah. well, Brendan or Bregman has been out the last couple of days with an illness, so I don't know if that's the reason mm -hmm. why. Well, if you're in a daily yeah. lineups league, then you could do that. But if obviously in your in the weekly league, that's going to be different. Um, but um, yeah. Any other thoughts with you guys here in terms of? Any pickups, obviously, uh, any two starters, if you guys have any two start must start pitchers next week that are on the waiver wire or just, again, anything in general fantasy baseball related. How much are you guys going to spend on Jackson Holiday and Fab? Um, he's, I don't think he's available in any leagues I'm in, to be honest with you. Is he available in TGFBI? No, because he was drafted in TGFBI. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He could have been drafted. I, I think he might have been, uh, he might be available in, in one of my leagues. And I don't know. I don't know how much I need, uh, how much I need an infielder right now. But uh, I also don't know how much his, 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 fantasy relevant stats are going to be this year. I did, I didn't come in believing he was going to be like a going to pop off in home runs or stolen bases. I think he might be like a 10-10 guy with a decent batting average. Mm -hmm. I don't I I don't know if I would go big even if I had a need on holiday. I was thinking about spending a lot and then I realized they have him hit ninth. And I, yeah. I know, obviously, he started out 0 for 7 with 6 Ks. He went 1 for 4, got his first hit today. But mm -hmm. that O's lineup is just so good. And I don't know what I would add him for. I would add him because he you know, should be a rostered player. But is he going to help me in a specific category? I think he's going to give you probably, if I had to guess, like 20 steals and like 15 home runs. I, I think can see it'll that. Which I think again is does play, uh, and give you you know in best case scenario maybe this year he only hits like two sixty two seventy, you know or maybe you don't think it's that well but I think when he's in his prime which I would expect to be potentially even next year that he you know he's figured out major league pitching you're probably getting a a guy competing for the American League batting title but also is giving you twenty homers and twenty five steals. I I don't I don't think the power is that developed just yet. I don't think this season he's going to get to 15 home runs. I would be surprising for me. With your over under art, I think the over under you got to put it at like 10, like 11 maybe. 11, the, 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 11. the books the books had his line at 10 and a half. I'll take the over. Um, smash the over. I I would take the under probably. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess we'll see. And obviously, we uh, I saw Angelo talking about Kowser. We did uh, go into depth with him, and he's been a freaking baller. Um, what about any last minute thoughts, guys? I know uh, we don't any in the chat. If you have any questions you guys want us to bring up before we get out of here, we kind of wanted to address some much must add players mm -hmm. uh, ahead of our Fab period going off here in just a little bit. I believe at um was it ten o'clock Eastern? I always forget. Yep. Yeah. Did we, uh, did we, uh, I did want to talk also. Did we have any thoughts? George Kirby, third straight, so, somewhat poor start. Uh, are, you, any, are you concerned? Were you high on Kirby coming into the year, D Mendy? I liked him. He wasn't like a my guy type of guy, but right. uh, I just, the only thing that was hard was where he was getting drafted, he was your ace, and I didn't feel comfortable yeah. with that. Um, so I don't have any George Kirby, but I, I do like him. And I think he will turn this around. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, if he's still doing this at the end of next month, then I will, I will be worried, but I'm giving yeah. him all of May as well. Yeah. I mean, three, three starts. Um, actually only his, his, his first start against Boston was actually really good. So it's only been his last two starts that have been bad. So his next start is Monday, uh, tomorrow against the Reds at home. So Next chance to get a good look at him. Hopefully he's right the ship at Toronto last time. Didn't look too good. That's all. We will see with George Kirby. And obviously keep an eye on these injuries because they are popping up left and right. So make sure you're staying active, managing your team, picking up who you need to fill some spots again. Cody Bradford just went down. Devers has been hurt. Uh, 
I believe um, there was another pitcher just went down. Salvador Perez just got hurt today or yesterday. Bob, Bob, I saw the Bob, play. Bobby Miller went down. Yeah, that was who I was thinking of. Thank you. Bobby yeah. Miller went down. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a jungle. Christian Yelich probably on the IL. Before we get out of here, someone brought us up in the chat, so I am curious. Uh, we talked about how much you would spend on Jackson Holiday. Um, how much money are you spending? Because I think it, it's going to be soon. Uh, as mentioned, I can't even find the comment anymore. So it was, it was uh, kind of far up a little bit ago. Paul Skeens. When Paul Skeens gets called up for the Pirates, how much of your fab percent-wise are you spending on him? It depends on how where I'm at fab wise at this point, I've only out of the thousand dollars fab, I've just, spent $14. Okay. So just pretend you have your a thousand dollars. So it's just for this. Uh, I think one of my flaws is that I spend here and there and I'm not aggressive or I'm not afraid to sit out. My pitching is doing really well, but I would be aggressive and I'm going to do 35% probably. Yeah. That's, that's, that might get them. Um, I, I, I've been really aggressive, had to be really aggressive in a few leagues early. Um, so I'm down, I may have spent the most in, in my Darf league out of all teams so far because my closers went down, my starters went down and I didn't, and Matt McLean went down. So depending on the league, you know, yeah, I mean, 25 to 35%, it sounds about right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. I've yeah. been like three hundred dollars so like 30 percent of my fab i think i would bid on him 301 technically to to try to maybe beat out yeah that. just that by yeah. a dollar yeah 301 <laughs> or two or something um i need pitching in a lot of my leagues so i'd probably look at that as well um but all right on that note uh we're going to oh yeah angela we did mention cody bradford was out as well we actually had a discussion on him earlier in the pod if you want to rewind on youtube or on the podcast when it's out tomorrow but Thank you guys again for another great episode. If you guys are enjoying the content and you're not subscribed to the new YouTube channel, please make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you'll never lose a moment when you realize we're going live and you can hop in the chat with us every week. Uh, and then if you're on the podcast version, thank you so much for listening there. And you know every single week it will be there for your commute to work. Now that's nice out, maybe you're mowing the lawn, put us in your ears. Uh, it's always fun and, and we like doing this for you every week. So we miss Marty Party. Marty Party should hopefully be back next week. But for Doc, for a little cheesecake, I'm Demendi. We'll make like a bread truck and we're going to haul these buns. Talk to you guys next week. Peace.